Hello and welcome to Fuzzy Loaf's Movie Talks, where we talk about rumors, movie news, and just general discussion about, you know, movies. Uh, I'm your host, Chuck. Uh, with me today, uh, Scott. Or Skosh, if you want. Whatever's cool. And Matt. Hey there. All right. Gonna go start off right away. Um, Fantastic Four trailer dropped this week. Finally. After, after pretty much what been the longest time of us thinking what the hell is going on with this movie from from rumors of well, not even rumors of re- reshoots actual news of reshoots well every movie has reshoots so it's not that big of a deal but it's, it's after we haven't heard anything about it yeah and if well, reshoots the, after us not even ever seeing a teaser the only things we heard about it were negative like it's a disaster yeah. josh trank is showing up drunk and throwing <laughs> and stuff that's what we've heard about it I mean, which I don't think is, seems to be the case from what we got. Everyone's like, it's going to be found footage. It's Chronicle 2. Well, from the trailer, obviously it's not. Right. It's going to be Interstellar. <laughs> That's what we got from the trailer. Yeah, it's got the same. <laughs> got a pickup truck driving through the corn cornfields. We got an overarching was, narrator. And that was weird. I didn't see that shot. And I was like, that looks like it's literally from Interstellar. Looked, well, no, I woke up that morning and I go to Chuck's room. And I go, hey, Chuck, did you watch the new Fantastic Four trailer? Yeah, he goes, Oh, uh, no, I haven't. Go, well, it's mostly like 30 seconds of landscape shots and narration. <laughs> you don't really see anything. No. Yeah. But, it, but it, okay, so I, before the trailer, we weren't hearing anything except negative stuff. I was like, this movie's going to just be a fucking bomb. It's not going to work. Right. And then, so, it comes out, we see the trailer, and I'm like, oh, maybe it's not going to be so bad. The cast, they look great. Plus, I liked the cast as soon as they were They out. just seem really young. That's my only thing. They but that's what they're going really for. Young if you for... read the Ultimate Fantastic Four like I did, they are de Yeah. <laughs> Annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, whatever. Either Anyway, yeah. they are younger, and it makes sense because you want a younger cast because you want the longevity of the franchise. Yeah. You're not going to hire 44-year-old actors because they're not going to be able to play the role for 10 years. Plus, no one cares about an older Reed Richards anymore. Yeah. No, they want someone more, you know, relatable. Plus, well, I think a younger... Even, even Fox's X-Men franchise, it's all younger people. Well, they literally they went make, back and passed so yeah. that they can cast younger people. No, I, and I find nothing wrong with that. Right. I, I think the casting is perfect. Miles Teller as Reed Richards, I think that's pretty good casting. Um, I love Kate Mara. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and Michael B. Jordan, he's one of my favorites too right now. Yeah. Him as Johnny Storm, everyone was like, you know, all the racists out there... Like, he's black, you know, it's just not Johnny Storm, it doesn't look like Johnny Storm. And I'm just like, you know, at first I kind of was like, he doesn't look like Johnny Storm, that's messed up. And then I started thinking about it, I go, like, who cares? You know, really, it doesn't matter that much. It's, you know, a movie reimagining. Obviously, we know what his character is in the comics. Yeah. This is who he'll be in the movies. And Michael B. Jordan, I think, can, like, though he doesn't look like Johnny from the comics, I think he can bring the characteristics like not physical characteristics just to the playboy character. Playboy smartass. Yeah. That's it. Just like just that whose the, body can the jockey. spontaneously combust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the jockey like let's party dude. I think he can do that. Yeah. You know bring I don't know. That's yeah. that's my thoughts. I wish I saw the thing. All right. And the thing's not wearing. They, they showed him. Yeah, they showed him turning into. And they yeah. showed his back. And we found out that he doesn't wear pants. Nice. He's got his thing. The thing's, got his, <laughs> the thing's got his thing out. The thing's thing is out. Thing's Are we going full out. Watchmen here, or is this just con- is just this rumored rock dig? I think it's rumored. Rumored, it's, rock, it's not. Have you ever seen so Mallrats? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Mallrats? Yeah. <laughs> Where he talks to Stan Lee and asks him about yeah. basically superhero genitalia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, do you, you saw a trailer though, Matt? What did you think besides it being interstellar ish? Um, really dark. Kind of the cookie cutter like action movie, like the low hum, the zhum, and then a narrator talking. Just like the Ant Man trailer. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's what these superhero trailers are very formulaic. Yeah. At least they're becoming more formulaic. Yeah. Was the the Avengers trailer was pretty much like that too. It's Fox though. They have a rocky yeah. They have a rocky record with the um, Fantastic Four, so they try something that is has, was accepted. But you know, Days of Future Past really like I went in Days of Future Past like with like zero expectations, because I the X Men franchise was just not good. Yeah. And then I came out of I saw Days of Future Past twice. I was like, yeah, 
I liked it a lot. It's and cool. I, I know Simon Kinberg wrote Days of Future Past. Yeah. He's basically the go-to Star Wars guy right now. And he wrote Fantas- Fantastic Four. So I, it kind of makes me have a little more faith yeah. in the movie. I think I think a majority of the issue that a lot of people have with this movie is is Trank. Yeah. Yeah. As a director, and I mean, it's it's unfair. He's only directed what two films, outside of. What has he directed besides Chronicle? I'm not sure. That's why I was like, I don't know. I but know I, he directed Chronicle. Okay. I saw Chronicle. Did you I, like Chronicle? I liked Chronicle. I didn't think it was a perfect movie. I liked the way that he handled the found footage. It wasn't like a nauseating jostly camera or anything like that the way he handled it where the guy controlled it to give it like a third person camera view with his powers because he has superpowers oh, yeah. and yeah, he used the camera and he put it behind him like a behind the shoulder kind of view sometimes it was like moving around and stuff like that I thought it was pretty cool because it's like he could still stick with the found um, found footage kind of genre but not have the crappy jostly person who doesn't know how to yeah. Chronicle was the first movie that he directed uh, he really? directed five episodes of a TV show called The Kill Point before that. But and then that's it? Just, just, that's, yeah. And he's, he's got a Star Wars standalone project project or coming out. Projected. Well, no, he's, he's going to. It's rumored. Yeah, I don't think it's confirmed. It's not confirmed. Yet. Oh, really? Do not ever say that it's confirmed until it's confirmed, especially when it comes to Star Wars. <laughs> okay. And Josh Trank in the same sentence. Um, I didn't like Chronicle. I did. I, I watched I it. Well, we don't, I wanted to like it, but I, was, I watched it and I went... I was like, I watched it, and I was like, oh, it's okay. But it's one of those movies, usually it's the opposite effect, where you watch something, you're like, oh, I didn't like that. Or then you, like, you, later on, you start to like it more. And I went out of it going, oh, it's okay. And as I look at it back in the morning, I go, I really did not like that movie. I actually thought it was okay. Yeah. I, I, hate, I, I hate the found I, footage. I don't like found footage movies, but for a found footage movie, I liked it. Okay, even if it wasn't found footage, I thought, I still wouldn't have liked it. Yeah. yeah it just seemed dumb. Oh, a kid has a troubled home life, and he turns into a super villain. I thought, I don't know, I just seen kind of okay, like... Okay, so the guy that reads comics. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but I just, it seemed kind of like... as tropey as it gets. It, kind, it seemed kind of cliche to me. But that was the point of it. Yeah, yeah but sometimes that works, and, and this, to me, it didn't work. Anyway, let's let's get away from Chronicle. Let's go back to this trailer. No Doctor Doom. Uh, well, there was a back shot of Doctor Doom. Was it? Yeah. It was was it at the, at the end of the trailer, right? Yeah. It's not confirmed. They don't know. People are speculating, yeah. It, we got Latveria, though. It looked though. like it could be Doctor Doom. It didn't look like it was going to be any of them. So, that's what I was thinking. Where is it going to be revealed? I want to know if he's going to be revealed soon. He's this in is it. just a teaser. We know he's yeah. in it. Well, I know. I want to see what he looks like. I want to yeah. see his mask. Well, people are talking because uh, Josh Trank likes uh, the fly so much. Okay, so that maybe Doctor Doom is gonna end up being like the Fly. He's gonna be melded with the all right, machine. Let me lay some comic book nerd info on you guys. Yeah. <laughs> In the Ultimate Fantastic Four comics, which seem to be what this is based off of, because they got the whole teleporting into the end zone thing, mm-hmm. or the negative zone. They're all younger. So in the Fantastic Four Ultimate comics, here's what happens: they're doing the project for the teleporter, and Doc Doom or Doom. He's not even called Doom anymore. He's Victor Von Dane. That's his name in the Ultimate Comics. Uh, I really threw me off when I was a kid. And then, so he messes with the configuration of the pro- machine because he thinks he knows better than Reed. So he's the one that caused it all to go all haywire. So then, what Doctor Doom comes out as? He's not the traditional, just like scarred body with the metal suit. He's scarred, but then he's got like kind of like hoof type feet. Kind of like a like a devil or a demon, where he's got like the weird like go like uh, Phil from Hercules. Yeah. He's got kind of like weird feet like that, and he's 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 more like monstrous. He's got kind of like claws. So maybe they're going to go along those lines in the movie, because they said you know fly horror. It might be, yeah. Because that'd be really disfigured if he came out really like, because everyone's gonna come out kind of messed up. It'd be weird if he just like oh he's just scarred. Well I mean and everyone else got weird yeah. powers. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Hey, cool. So I'm, I'm actually, I might actually go see. Are it. you more excited now for Fantastic Four? I am. As the tra- was the trailer great? No, it wasn't amazing. But there's a lot to be desired. But it's only a teaser. Yeah, it was a teaser. But I'm more excited now because I originally wasn't even gonna see it. What about you, Matt? Uh, I'm kind of iffy. 
I was iffy on the idea of another Fantastic Four movie to start, so we'll see. I mean, like you said, this is only a teaser. So right, we'll so yeah, we need trailer. more. Well, yeah. the Fantastic Four comics are so insane and wild and crazy fantasy sci-fi. Yeah. To like do that in a movie almost just seems like weird. Yeah. Well, we'll see how the audiences prepare for it because if they go for the more, you know, less technological, more fantasy-esque with the, with the demon doom... Um, how audiences react to it, because then we can see how they might react to, say, something like Doctor Strange. Well, if you think, because if Fantastic Four is so crazy and wild, you can almost think of it as, like, Marvel's Doctor Who, where, like, Reed Richards is, like, the doctor of the Marvel universe. He's very cold, you know, he's more logical thinking, he's all about science and stuff like that. Um, Even in the comics, too, and, like, it's kind of a more recent development, but Sue actually talks to Reed and thinks that he might be autistic. No, because cause of the way he, like, he's also, even yeah. he's super genius and crazy, but, like, the way his uh, um, be better social to, skills. Maybe he's more, that's, I'm not going to go into mental conditions or anything. No, no, like no, that's, 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 I'm, that's just what they said in the comics, <laughs> not what I said. Right. That's what she <laughs> told him, written in the comics. I'm not a writer. That's what she writer. said. That's what she said. Oh, I quit. All right. Moving on. Let's get off of Fantastic Four. Um, some more comic book news. Yeah, I not really a lot going on this week. Um, a recent Walt Disney Marvel Studio casting report puts um, Daniel Brawl from Inglorious Bastards. He was also a he starred versus um, not starred versus starred opposite Chris Hemsworth in the Rush, which was a race thriller. Came out I think in last year. Was it last year? Twenty fourteen or two thousand thirteen? I think it was two thousand thirteen. I'm pretty sure it was like the end of twenty thirteen. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Daniel Brühl's been listed as being cast as Baron Zemo in the in Cap Three. Scott's our re- our resident comic book nerd, so who's Baron Zemo and why should we give a damn? Baron Zemo was in the comics. There's he was, he was a Nazi. There's two right? Baron Zemos. There was what? I just I I actually just learned about Baron Zemo a lot yesterday. I like learned about him from listening to other podcasts. Um, so Baron Zemo was introduced retroactively. So in like Avengers number four or whatever, after they bring Captain America back, they're um, fighting Baron Zemo. And Captain America's like, Baron Zemo, what? And then so then you find out in um, the Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos, which was another comic going the same time as Avengers, but took place during World War II, they also fought Baron Zemo. So Baron Zemo was around in World War II. Turns out that Baron Zemo was the one responsible for Captain America being frozen and Bucky um, dying. Mm. Straps him to a rocket. It's kind of weird. Com- <clears throat> Comics in the 60s are weird. <laughs> so that, that was Heinrich Zemo. Just in the 60s. Yeah, he was a Nazi. And then later his son, Helmut Zemo, Takes over and he's the main Zemo we Helmet. see. Helmet. 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 I know. That's it's a, a dumbest it's a German name. Is it a German name? Yeah. Helmut. German. All right. Well, anyway, he's the Zemo we see for most of the time afterwards. But he's for the longest time he was basically the arch enemy of the Avengers. Oh. So I mean, the fact that we're getting him in the cinematic universe and he's got a crazy wild costume. Oh really? Have you seen it? Mm. Um, well, it's like purple. He's got a purple mask. With like eye holes and like a crown, and he's got like bushy, like uh, white frills, like shoulders, and it's kind of like regal, but also very. It's just the strangest costume. So I'm, I'm really excited just to see what he looks like in the movie. Because uh, they modernize. They modernize the it, costumes. realize it, so. because it does not look. I mean, I haven't been disappointed by any of the costumes so far. Yeah. No, do you think this is the first Marvel villain that we'll get besides Loki that isn't kind of just boring and, I think, and dies I think, in the first yeah, movie that they're in? I think Ultron will. Well, besides Thanos, I guess. I think Ultron's going to be the, the... I think we're going to get a good Marvel villain with Ultron. Yeah. Because Loki is more of an anti-hero now. Yeah, he is. After the Thor and Dark World. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of. I don't know. Loki's an interesting character. Loki, if, if even in the comics, can't hate Loki, even if he does the stupid stuff. No, people love him. It's Tom Hiddleston. It's the charm. Yeah. It's got so many fangirls. <laughs> that English charm. Uh, but since you guys don't really know anything else about Baron Zemo, right? Just me. Well, I I don't know who Daniel Brawl is, but the fact that I hear Zemo is going to be in a Marvel film, 
that's enough to get me excited. Cool, that's good. I think that should be good enough for a lot of us then that don't know much about comics. Also, it's the third Captain America movie, which uh, should it's, it's gonna be great. So it covers the Civil War. So. Yeah. Not not the Civil War, the Marvel <laughs> Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> Captain would, America Civil War covers it's a period the, piece. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> make, yeah. Be careful. A lot of people might think uh, Captain America goes back in time. Yeah. But no. No, but it's about uh, the Marvel Cin- Civil War, uh, supers versus supers, pretty much. But, Iron um, Man versus Captain America. Pretty much, that's exactly it. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's that's, that's some a bit of an interesting news, casting news. Not a lot of other casting news for a lot of movies. Uh, so we're gonna move on. And in a recent interview with Empire, um, Joss Whedon stated that it will be very doubtful that he take on the two-part Infinity War. Age of Ultron is going to be his last movie uh, MCU film that he'll direct. So right now, yeah, that's what he says. Yeah, um, he did go on to state that he would like to stay in um, part of the MCU in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, have him on as a consultant, right? Or, yeah. or a producer, Wait, just have him on as a producer. writer. Something. I mean, he he honestly has created this entire. He created all the stories and he consulted it so that. Well, he didn't create all the stories. Well, no, no, he, he, he made the Avengers. No, I'm talking about in the movies. He created these stories so that they could, in the future, be worked towards and make make it so that it's streamlined more. You cannot say that Joss Whedon was not the part, the reason why this sit franchise is now huge. I well, think it's, I think it's Kevin it's, Feige. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Feige. I'm. He's the guy with the vision for the... He's got the movies planned out till 2023. Yeah. 20, 20, 2,235 or however well, long he's got it planned out for. But I'm, talking, I'm, not talking <laughs> about, I'm not talking about the franchise as just plans for a franchise. Yeah, we already know that Fast and the Furious is going to be planned for another four more movies. That doesn't yeah. mean anything. It's how the director is. And Joss Whedon... As a director, remember, people don't take the fact that he's, like, the director. He also wrote The Avengers. Right. That he, that without him, these movies, you, you can have, a, you can have a, a slot list for 20 more years on a movie that you want. It doesn't matter squat if you just throw crappy directors on the movies. Yeah, but, I mean, look at who they've had direct other movies in the MCU. The Russos. So yeah, I mean, they've had really good luck with um, directors that are kind of new and untested. So maybe they think that. Well, yeah. Well, with um, three and four, with Infinity Wars, maybe they want another person. Yes, Joe or Tuss, or the Winter on. Soldier directors, co-directors Joe and Anthony Russo will be heading Infinity War. Oh, well, they, that's yeah. rumored, right? It's not confirmed by the studio. <laughs> it was, it was, um, Sony, the Sony hack from a few months ago, oh. kind of released that. They talked about uh, Joe and Anthony Russo in an email, and one of them said. Ah, we're gonna be busy with Infinity War, something like something along those lines. Whereas yeah. in like one of the hacked emails, so that's what we heard. But that until it comes out from Marvel or Disney, it's not 100. percent Well, I don't know. And I think even if Joss Whedon says that he's not working on Infinity Wars, I think he will be in some capacity. Well, yeah, he wants. I don't they'll they'll want him. Yeah, they yeah. Don't know. But he, dude, I, from what I've heard is. Working on the Avengers has just worn him out. Yeah, yeah that's why he doesn't want to be well, a part of it anymore. Isn't he also pro- he's producing Shield, isn't he? Agents of Shield. Uh, he, yeah, he, he's not he, really involved. Yeah. It's his brother that's more involved. In. But Joss wants to go back and he wants to do his own original things. You know, it's what he's known for. Yeah. I mean, yeah, working on these big franchises. They don't. They don't pan out as well, but yeah. I just, I'm just joking. Well, he, they're they're loved. They're but, well but, loved. But now he's got the, but now he's got this huge credit for Avengers that maybe he'll be able to take more them. opportunities. Right. Like, oh, look what he did with Avengers. Let's let him do some stuff. Yeah. Hopefully he just doesn't get Firefly again. Is that, uh, a, is that a verb now to be not, Firefly? Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, let's not talk it's about like that. It's like the opposite of jumping the shark. You know, it's I've actually, I've, I've, never, I've never yeah. seen Firefly. You either oh. live you either live long enough to see yourself jump the shark, or you're Firefly. Or you're firefly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So yeah, Joss Whedon, done. After. I think the Russos would be perfect for Infinity War. They, they, for what they did with Winter Captain Soldier. Captain 2 was so great. Might yeah. be my favorite of the MC movies, MCU, besides Avengers. Avengers is my number one. I don't, yeah. I think Cap, Cap 2 is might, my, Cap 2 is my 2. Above. Avengers for me because it was it caught me off guard. I didn't think it was gonna be that good. Mm. All right, 
so moving on that's about it for comic book news that i have for right now so we'll um we'll talk about that later uh let's just jump in uh some more news emma watson everyone loves some emma watson news emma watson has been casted as beauty in beauty and the beast yeah the uh, disney interpretation um no word yet on who's gonna be cast as beast so we'll, I'm, I'm gonna audition. You're, you're gonna be beast. I, I feel like I can so, do it. I just show up with my shirt I'll off. I'll be and... so jealous of you. You get to star opposite Emma Watson. <laughs> just, just to be. They don't even need the makeup. Yeah. I'll, just, yeah. I'll just wake up just one morning. I won't. I won't shower. Okay. So I'll, just, like, just, I'll, I'll do the audition tape. You won't even know it. I'll just come with the camera and just like throw water on you in your bed. This is uh, this is Scott's audition tape for being beast. Throw water. Oh. Oh. Rips and shit. Perfect. I'll be done. Rip my shirt. I don't sleep with a shirt on. <laughs> they won't. They save so much on makeup, man. <laughs> right, but yeah, Emma Watson cast as Beauty and Beauty and the Beast. Me, my big thing with this movie is that I'm. It's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to take this because um, no, it has nothing to do with Emma Watson. It has nothing to do with live interpretations um, of of Disney classics. But the fact that Beauty and the Beast, the animated feature, is it won the Oscar for Best Picture when it came out. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. It is... That's how great it was. That was This was before animated feature yeah. was a, a category, and it was... This is a movie that was put up for and won Best Picture. So, I'm interested to see how it goes. Is it going to tarnish the image? Is it going to be a nice addition to what well, is, I don't, is it going to we'll, be? We'll, I don't, we'll see how Cinderella goes when it comes out. Yeah, I guess that's true, because we... We haven't really. Well, Maleficent was the first in their kind of live action. Yeah, but that was from the villain's point of view, not from yeah. the. Did you see Maleficent? Did either of you see Maleficent? No, I never met it. I want it. I, it's, I, it's, it's just it's sitting good. there on my log, and I should watch it. You should but... watch it. it. It was actually really good. Me and Ashley saw it in theaters. I think we saw it twice. Really? Yeah, it was good. I mean, it was a lot better than I thought. Here's another thing about um, the Beauty and the Beast that I heard it's going to be a musical. Is it? Yeah. Apparently Emma Watson said that she's taking singing lessons for it. Well, of course it's gonna be. It's gotta be a musical. D- well, Disney. Maleficent wasn't a musical. But it was different because it was. It wasn't. It was a. It was an original story. Yeah. I guess. Versus this is gonna be an interpretation of a Disney classic. Not the. Not the story is the new, of. Now is the new cin- live action Cinderella is that a musical? Wait, was Cinderella even a musical? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I never. Every, every, every Disney, Disney, Cinderella. Every yeah, the Disney rats. Disney. And everything. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, the mice. I'm sorry. No, <clears> I, I never saw Cinderella. The rats. The rats. You just angered some thirteen year old. I am. I am. No, no, I angered uh, people my age that yeah, grew up true. with those movies. Yeah, yeah but it should, I'm pretty sure it, it should be a musical. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just wanted to. I'm just gonna try and fact check my Oscar claim. Cause I, <laughs> I can feel like I'm wrong. I know it was nominated, but I don't want to say that it won. Here, how about I look that up and you keep you move on to the next okay. topic. Perfect. All right. Um. So. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Emma Watson. Emma Watson. That's pretty Emma much. Watson. Pretty much. That's all we ever have to say because we're yeah. three men talking about movies and then Emma Watson. It'll, okay. It'll sell tickets. It'll I, sell tickets. I got it here. Us. For the Academy Awards, it was nominated for right. Best Picture nominated. and Best Sound Mixing. Did not win. It did win for Best Original Score and Best Original Song. Cool. Okay. So, but for that, for um, it was the first. That's what it was. It was the first animated film to be nom- to be nominated for Best Picture. That's yeah. what it was. Sorry, I was wrong. It didn't win. Oh well. Being nominated is pretty much winning. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's pretty much. It is pretty much yeah. winning. You don't, you win. You just means you're slightly better than the other films. All right. Um, sticking with awards, can I just want to jump into it because Oscars are next week. Is it really? Yeah, they're next week. Oh, that's Super not Bowl true. tomorrow, Oscars next week. All right. right. So um, earlier in the week, uh, was it earlier in the week or was it last Sunday? Anyway, early early in the week, uh, the Producers Guild Awards happened, and Birdman went on to win Best Picture. Yeah, I saw that. Where and Lego Movie won Best Animated Feature. These are the two biggest stories. There are other winners, but I wanted to talk about these two specifically. Um, first, I want to start with Lego Movie. Lego Movie won Best Animated Feature at the PGA. It's huge because the Producers Guild Awards are they share a lot of the same pool voting pools as the Oscars and the um, Golden Globes and anything like that. But the thing is, is that it was it was it won this, but it lost at the Globes and it wasn't even nominated at the Oscars. 
which infuriated a lot of people. This was one of the biggest snubs. People were more upset with that as a snub than anything that had to do with Selma. Right. Because it, <clears> it, <throat> it was like, it was a good People movie. thought it was going to win. For animated, because it's like, it was, it was a really great movie, so. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring that up, that it did win the, the Producers Guild Award. So people that were upset about Lego Movie not winning anything, it won something. All right. Um, but Birdman, Best Picture. This is a big deal, because the last 12 PGA Best Picture winners have gone on to win Best Picture at the Oscar. Really? Mm-hmm. I hope Birdman does win. I really enjoy over it. Overboyhood. Oh, yeah, Overboyhood. Yeah. See, that's... But I still... I. But if Hollywood... If Hollywood is as, as, as the same as ever going to be, Boyhood's going to win. Yeah, well... That's what I said. I thought... the thing. People will talk about Boyhood being better from like a technical standpoint because of the fact that it was filmed over such a long period of time. And people love Linklater. I mean, it just yeah, comes did. down to that. You know... Um, Birdman was also a good technical achievement. I mean, obviously not as extreme, but like yeah. they filmed the whole movie in a month. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. It's pretty good for what it turned out in a month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a, a majority of films that are not of Hollywood standards are filmed in a month. <laughs> well, but like Hollywood films are form, filmed over like four or five months. Yeah. So like really, that's a, obviously not not twelve years like Boyhood, but yeah. I don't know. Coming out of it. I saw both. I really liked Boyhood when I first saw it. It doesn't really have the rewatchability factor for me like um, Birdman does. Yeah, I, I, I've heard from people, because I haven't seen either of them. Plus it's I so see damn both of them. Long. Um, I've heard that Boyhood uh, is not as good like story-wise, or like it's not as compelling versus Birdman. I mean, I don't know if that's... Yeah, I, I, that's what, I've, that's what I've, I've pretty much heard from everyone is that. Although, yeah, cool, it was film number 12, 12 years or such like that. It was just boring. It just yeah. there was a film over something. It's like it's a really well. Someone put it. Someone said that it was a really well put together home movie. Yeah. Well, I didn't think it was that boring. But like, but I didn't think but it was best a, picture. Yeah. It's got it's kind of Birdman. Versus all these other films that are out there right now. Yeah. So that's the thing. That's what people say. And that's what I just wanted to bring up is that for the last past twelve years, it's been. Whoever wins PGA Best Picture wins Oscars. So we'll see. It could be a third hit. It could be... Um, Boyhead takes Best Picture at the Golden Globes. Uh, PGA, get, Birdman gets it. And then Budapest Hotel or something takes yeah. that at the Oscars. Budapest Hotel, a lot of people take it. This might be Wes Anderson's, you know, his win. Yeah. Uh, the, the Academy he, likes it for once. He like They yeah. like a movie by him for once, which is a pretty big deal. I thought Budapest was okay. I enjoyed. I wouldn't. I love. I love Wes Anderson. What is it? Wes Anderson films, and I love that. I love Grand Budapest Hotel. But versus all these other films, I don't think it should win. No. I think it's good. I think it's. I actually, thought it was fun. I think film. it's actually I better. Watching it. I think it's actually better saying that it was nominated than for actually winning. That's enough. Just yeah. for the movie itself. Well, I think for all three of them, because if you nominated, is a win. Because the problem with the problem with when you when you when you when you market a movie as an Oscar winning movie is that it raises people's expectations. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Whereas if a nomination people will say, Oh yeah, this is it was nominated, so it's gotta be a good movie. So they go in thinking it's a good movie <clears> and they'll walk away thinking it's a good movie. It's a you go in and say it's best picture and you walk away with Scott saying, eh, it was okay. Well, yeah, that's but then you put it on like something like Birdman where it's like just universal praise ninety seven percent across the board. Yeah. Well, that's like what I call the Scott Pilgrim effect. I went and saw that movie. Everybody talked shit, saying it was the worst movie they've ever seen. What? Yeah. I and saw it. And I thought it was. I awesome. saw it, and I thought it was amazing because my expectations were and did so you, low. Did you read the? You didn't read the books. I read the books afterwards. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I wasn't even aware there was a comic book until. Or oh, see, I was, novel. but I was just too lazy to read it. No. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Just wanted to bring that up. Awards are always, they always bring the best out of people. Birdman 2015. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where's my uh, sticker? Yeah, where's my <laughs> Let's jump into some, a little bit of Star Wars news. Um, Chris White's selected as the new screenwriter for the Star Wars standalone film. Um, his writing credits include uh, movies such as Ants, uh, Oscar nominated, a uh, movie uh, about a boy. He did that, I think he did that yeah. with his family, his brother, I think is with, you think his brother is. Anyway, and then he also did, he wrote The Golden Compass. 
He also directed Twilight, the new moon. Yeah. Who cares? He's not directing this film, so don't take that into consideration. But well, you should also take into consideration that when he did direct Twilight, the new moon, I read the books, sorry. And <laughs> quite frankly, the most boring of the four books yeah. and the most boring of the five movies, it is the eighth top grossing opening f- domestic film. Yeah, I don't know if Ever. that. I don't know if he has anything to do with that. I mean, that movie. That could have just been a diehard fans. Yeah. But that's the thing is that the second movie but, was critically panned. Yeah. But audiences loved it. Okay, here's the thing with him coming on as new screenwriter for the Star Wars standalone. He's not rewriting it from scratch. Yeah, yeah he's already got. Well, they have yeah, what, yeah, from no what writing. we would yeah. assume. We have the previous writer, was it Gary Whitta? Gary Whitta, yeah. Who wrote... So what he's probably doing is he's probably taking it, and from what I heard is he's refining some of the dialogue. That's what he's coming out for. As for long as it part. doesn't sound like Twilight. Well, I'm... But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. He, he didn't write it. And it was right. based off of dog books. Love, 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 love. So, I mean... Yeah. Do we, it, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. To me, this news doesn't have much significance. Yeah. I mean, the only... That it's Star Wars. That's the most significant part. It's, I mean, we have finally have a new screenwriter on it. Right. The, the, the script and everything has already been... The first draft is done. Now yeah. I just need some touching up. He should have been put as... Like, or just a new editor. Well, yeah. This, I think this is, the, this is the problem with the consumer-facing side of this. Is if you are Star Wars fans but don't know anything about movies and you hear the writer just left and a new writer's brought in and the movie is supposed to come out this fall, right? Or oh, is it next no, it's fall? a 2016, 2016 release. Okay. So 2016, you're thinking they're going to rewrite and shoot the film in one year, but no. it's like, no, he's more of an editor, like you said. He's going to add flavor to it. He's going to change Spice dialogue. Spice up the dialogue. Right? Go, go over some low bit. points in the story because you know they're probably well, that's what happens. Yeah. So. Not, well, it, even, even people that write books, like even like Stephanie Meyer with freaking Twilight, <laughs> you know there was tons of people that went in and edited and refined points that... Told just, her you should do this. Yeah, you just... Bit. It's impossible to write something from start to finish you just kind of get this, like you get drunk goggles. You right. can't really see the problems. You have right. to have somebody else coming yeah. in. Yeah, that's exactly eyes. what that's what they're doing. They got someone else coming in. Yeah. Well, it's Star Wars, and it's, it's Star Wars. You know, Disney owns it now. I mean, this isn't the first time that they be good. Changed, yeah, nice. changed around anyway on movies. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I interesting. The Golden Compass thing kind of interests me because I saw that movie and I actually I was surprised that I liked it as much no, as I did. That's what I'm saying. He, like I said, he also wrote Ants. Yeah. Which was great. I thought it. I loved Ants. I don't, I don't remember Ants. I, I don't remember Ants. It. It I was too young. Yeah. I was, it's, it's not a kids movie. No. It, it, <laughs> I remember seeing it. I went. Um, like my a, dad took me and my siblings to go see it, and I remember thinking, "This is a kids movie." Yeah. You know, I was young. Not a kids movie. I don't remember how old I was when Ants came out, but. I was more like Bugs Life, not Ants. They both came out the same well, time. It was, yeah, it was one of those movies. It I came out right around the same time. And I was, I was, I was Bugs, into Bugs I Life. It was, like it was a DreamWorks Life. film, so. Yeah. Anyway, um, sticking a little bit, kind of with the Star Wars news, uh, just because it's in relation to it. Mission Impossible 5, uh, un- untitled as of yet, but MI5 is what That is what it was titled was MI5. They're going to have another one. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they, Subtitle, they do they're Mission gonna, Impossible something. Yeah, they'll after, yeah. probably after Shadow Protocol, they probably will. Is that what it's called? Shadow Protocol? Ghost Protocol. Ghost Protocol. Shadow Protocol. Dark, I'm sorry. I, Dark Souls? I, Dark, 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 Dark Souls I, movie? I, <laughs> what I, I, was it I watch a lot of spy movies, and I play a lot of spy games, and they have all these crappy names for their stupid code. Hey, whatever. Yeah. Um, Mission Impossible 5 is being moved to a release date on July 31st, five months earlier than the planned um, release date, due to fear of being released one week after Star Wars. Well, out. that's not the exact reason. That's what we assume is the reason. Oh, yeah. uh, come on. Why else would you release a movie five months earlier? And you don't release a movie, oh, it's ready. No, you just you just keep it at the Ding, same... Ding, it's done! Yeah, you, <laughs> you, 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 it's, it's safe to assume... This has been done before. It's Star Wars. You're not. It's on Christmas. You're not gonna release a movie yeah, uh, well, versus Star Wars on it, Christmas. Really? I mean, if this you is going. The, if sorry. you look at the history of like f- film, like that comes out around Christmas time. Mm-hmm. There's there can only be one like big film around Christmas there time. There can be yeah. only. <laughs> you knew you were saying this about films. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't have like more than one big movie around Christmas time. Otherwise, you're gonna get. 
you're gonna get boned. Yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not gonna make out. money. You're not gonna get yeah. anything opening. Family films, and then like, I mean, think back to Sherlock Holmes. I think the first two, right? Both of them, I think, released on Christmas Day. With and, Robert Downey. Yeah, the new Sherlock that. films. Um, but like you, you can't open against Star Wars. Like you can't be an action film of any kind and hope to get any amount of people in theaters on that weekend. I think what their original plan was. Uh, to like get some of the people that couldn't make it into Star Wars, like, oh, we're here to see Star Wars. Sorry, it's sold out. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll go see it, my friend. Yeah. And then I think they realized, oh, no, that's just not going like, to work at all. They're, they're just... going to be releasing versus relatively other weaker um, films that are coming out. Well, what they're going like, for yeah. is they're going for the Guardians of the Galaxy release date. Yeah. But that's the same time it... Guardians came out. What's coming out August? It was oh, a remake. No, okay. It was yeah. a remake for a movie. No, what is... Isn't a Marvel film coming out this Ant-Man. August? Ant Man. So well, I guess at least no. That's July. Out. That comes out in July. Yeah, they're coming. It's but July. It'll already be yeah. out. Yeah, that'll be fine then. I mean, they they're really more worried about their opening. You yeah. see, that's where you. It's like where you can figure out if it's gonna yeah. sell or not. Well, that's the other thing about Star Wars films is the fans are gonna see it repeatedly, even if they don't like it. Oh yeah. They're gonna see it repeatedly. Yeah. I'm gonna so watch it. Not... I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna find. It. I'm gonna see it the first day. I'm gonna see it opening yeah. night at midnight. I'm going to see it in the best possible way I can. Probably going to go all the way down to the Minnesota Zoo, to the IMAX, so I can watch it and be blown away, brag about it to my friends, and go see it with other friends, my, go yeah. see it with my friends, watch it. You should buy your ticket now. Right, I probably have to. If, it's, if they're selling it. I don't think but that's I don't what I, I that's should what re- I would do. I should request yeah. a day off right. work so I can go see it. Why, why are you... Why aren't you coming to work today? Star Wars! <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to write on my form when I request for the day off. Uh, reason for it's time like, off? It's like star. holiday, sick, uh, leave of absence, other. Star Wars. The Force, o- the force Awakens. <laughs> the Force has awoken. Don't even put Star Wars. Just say <laughs> the Force yeah. has awoken. Don't even take one day it. off. Take a full week. And when they ask you, it's Star Wars, man. I have to watch. I gotta watch it every day. Yeah. Gotta go every day. I hope a Star Wars movie comes out on May 4th. Sometime. May the 4th be with me. Star Wars be with you. Nice Star Wars. Day. We need one of them. All right. Out, then. So yeah, moved. That's that's huge though. Five months moving. That's that's insane. Yeah, I mean. Now, hopefully they're ready. Isn't didn't uh, didn't DC do this with the Don of Superman? It moved Don of up. Superman, Don. Batman v Superman, Don of Justice. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, because Don of Superman. It's Don of Superman Part Two. Yeah. Don. <laughs> Introducing Superman. Stop. <laughs> it was originally going up against Civil War, Captain America Civil yeah. War. And then they realized, oh, hell. Oh, no. <laughs> As, even though they have Batman and Superman, they're like, no. Oh. That's Universal. I think it's Universal. Universal. That owns Mission Impossible. Oh, I oh I'm not. It does be. I would, I, yeah. No, it's no, not, no. Whatever. It's not so You were well, saying. So, yeah, they're going up against, it was coming out the same day. Yeah. As uh, Civil War. And they're like, nope. <laughs> Screw that. So now it's coming out in March. Yeah. It's good for a us. weird time. Yeah, it's fine by me. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm gonna see Batman v Superman. Obviously, I have no hopes for it after Man of Steel. But you'll see it there anyway. Well, we'll see. All right. Um. <laughs> next news. Oh, I, I was about, I, just, I read about, heard about this, and I felt I just I was I was so happy. Uh, the first of Adam Sandler's n- four Netflix exclusive movies, Ridiculous Six, have Jesus. confirmed five of the six um, titular. Cast members. Uh, oh my fuck. Adam Sandler, <laughs> Rob <laughs> Schneider, oh god. Taylor Lautner. That's right. Okay. Taylor, Taylor How Lautner. is Adam Sandler friends with Taylor Lautner? Because he was in Grown Ups too. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because because he gets just the kookiest people want to be in an Adam Sandler movie. Tell me well, you wouldn't be in an Adam Sandler movie. I, Adam Sandler said, called him like, I would hey, do it did you want to be in a, Adam in one of my movies? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, sure. Why? Hell yeah. Click. What are you gonna do? We're gonna throw poop at you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to Australia. I need another vacation. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. Taylor Laudner, Luke Wilson, and Terry Crews. Those are the five he's, of he's the six. He's good friends with Terry Crews. Terry Crews is in a lot of his movies. But, so these are the five <laughs> um, other cast members that have been confirmed. Um, Nick Nolte yeah. playing Sandler's father in the movie. John Lovitz. Whitney Cummings. Will Forte. Danny Trejo. I like this cast. And Steve Buscemi. This sounds like the ultimate Adam. This Sandler sounds like movie. this sounds like an actual. Uh, was it Happy Ma- Happy Madison? Madison? Ha- ha- 
Happy Gilmore? No, or? not Happy Madison. Happy production. Madison's production. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, what yeah, you, I was like, I was like, seeing the title. <laughs> no, it sounds like an actual <laughs> Happy yeah. Madison's production, and it is because yeah. it's just it's just funded by Netflix. But here's the, here's what it really got me. All right, Wyatt Earp, you know, has been played by like Kevin Costner, just this Western character, going to be portrayed by Blake Shelton, country music star and host of The Voice. I feel like Adam Sandler is just going, just looking at Hollywood, going. Why not? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Keep that in mind, because the next announcement, Mark Twain. They're going to portray Mark Twain, you know, major yeah. major American cultural figure. Look at it. Scott's already seen it. Vanilla Ice is going to be Mark Twain. You know the guy that... They're going to get a freaking Juggalo to play Mark Twain. <laughs> They're going to get... You know what Juggalos in any of our movies? <laughs> They're going to have... Vanilla Ice play as the man who wrote Huck Finn. Uh, so is this a western? It's a western. It is a western comedy. Is it a parody of uh, Hateful Eight? It, I don't, it, it sounds like it. It's called The Ridiculous Six. Yeah. But it's the first of four Netflix exclusives. Whatever. I don't watch Adam Sandler movies anymore. What's wrong? I will I'm, absolutely watch I will I'm, absolutely. I'm not, yeah, just, I'm not just six. Just I, have, I don't know anything about it. I don't, there's no there's no news on the plot or anything like yeah. that. It's literally just supposed to be well, like maybe maybe will. these people are gonna have a problem and they're gonna have to deal with it, but they're all incompetent. An Adam Sandler movie, yeah, with an apparent really awesome cast. Is this the return of Adam Sandler? Maybe. I hope so. I honestly hope so. I yeah. love Adam Sandler. I love you didn't him. see Top Five. He was in it for a little bit. And he was he was pretty funny in there for the second he got. Though the one who stole the show in top five, Jerry Seinfeld. Oh really? You don't know funny until you see Jerry Seinfeld making it rain on a bunch of strippers. <laughs> <laughs> I lost. <laughs> Sorry, but just talking about Adam Sandler. Yeah. Because you know he's good friends with Chris Rock and. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about the the comedy trailer that dropped today by Seth MacFarlane. Or not today, this week. Ted two. Ted two. Let's talk about that. Ted two. I was confused. I was like, he dropped another trailer. Why don't you just say Ted 2? Yeah. yeah. Ted 2 trailer <laughs> dropped. Oh. Ted, Ted 2 trailer dropped. Yeah. Hey, you guys see the first Ted? I did. I did. What did you think? I actually liked it when I first saw it. Do you like Peter Griffin as a teddy bear? I don't like Family Guy. Yeah. It was... It's funny. And I like I, it. It's Quagmire as a teddy bear with Peter Griffin's voice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you gotta say. But I, I'm not a Family Guy fan. I used to watch Family Guy as a kid. Not like a kid kid, but you know. Oh, it's been on since like 98. Well, yeah. yeah, I watched it when I was younger, but as I've gotten older now, I'm just like, not into that kind of humor anymore. It's just, dra- it's, no offense, I know I'm probably going to make some people mad, it's kind of like The Simpsons now, it's just been so long, and you can only tell the Simpsons. And we're talking about okay, Family Guy. But let's, no, no, I know. But you're bringing but... up The Simpsons, I watched, <laughs> The Simpsons Family Guy crossover that happened this fall, I watched yeah. it, and it made me realize... How much like more like lowbrow Family Guy is compared to The Simpsons? Yeah, when you're well, watching them interact together, you're just like, oh man, The Simpsons is like more. Simpsons the Simpsons is a family comedy. The, the quality is kind of down on The Simpsons; it's not yeah, as good. It is. But the jokes are smarter than Family Guy jokes. Family Guy is like poop and yeah. dick jokes all the time. That's and so I'm I, not into that. I like my humor a little. It doesn't have to be very intelligent because I'm not very intelligent. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> but I mean, like, it. I want to like. Because you go, oh, I get it. Yeah. Not like, oh, yeah. That's the kind of humor I like. So that's what you, so Ted 2. No? <laughs> Are we going to talk about it I'll or see anything? It. I'll still see it. it. I'll it, see it. it. You got to watch it. because I, I did enjoy it. the first it's, one. It's just hijinks. It's just, it's yeah. the, the, it just shows them making butt jokes and I like Mar- jokes I like Mark, Mar- Mar- I like Marky Mark. Yeah. Although, did you hear? Mila Kunis not coming back. Yeah, she's, they only have, no, they, it's not, she's not a, lead role but I think they're going to have a reason they're going to show her for like a couple seconds or something like a cameo a cameo and then they're going to have it for a reason for Mark Wahlberg to chase Amanda Seyfried's character she was in a, excuse me A Million Ways to Die in the West yeah I, I loved that movie I was surprised you A Million did? Ways to Die in the West I everyone actually, said it was awful no Everybody I thought it was hilarious I, really I watched it this is when we first oh moved it. this is when we first moved into our place and we didn't have the internet so I had to watch all movies on my phone so I was just sitting in my bed and I watched this movie, and I was laughing. 
so hard. It just doesn't just like <laughs> that's it. This was me the whole time yeah, I was watching it's, it. It's just it's everything I've heard about from I, start to well, finish. Well, I went in expecting crap, and I got more yeah. than what I expected. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what do you expect? It's a Seth MacFarlane movie. I mean, yeah. I like Seth, Seth MacFarlane. He's an intelligent man. He, he, yeah, his, he his, his comedy. He's, he's, he's doing. He does great comedy when he has a control of everything like yeah. that. And the movie was fine. Was it? Was it? It was no hot tub time machine. Well, yeah, it wasn't Obviously. the perfect comedy. <laughs> but. <laughs> Have you even seen Hot Top Time Machine? I have seen okay, Hot good. Top Machine. Okay, good. I'm taking a break out of my vacation to go see Hot Top Time Machine 2 when it comes out. I'm going to be in Vegas. Yeah. I'm going to take a little detour. We're going to find a theater nearby, go to a midnight release. We're going to We're gonna be, well, I guess you guys might be down there as we're leaving, but I was going to say, we're going to be down near you when you're in Vegas, because we're going to be in Arizona. I won't know who anyone is. It's just him and Ashley, right? Yeah, it's just me and Ashley. I won't know who anyone is. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be drunk, that's why. Yeah, that's why. Um, it's a steady drunk for five days. Yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, Ted 2? Yeah. Um, I might go see it. I saw the first Ted before work one day when I was bored and no one else would hang out with me. So yeah. I was like, well, you know what? Or no, I saw it, I think, in between jobs. I was going from somewhere to something else and I was like, well, I have time to kill and go sit in the theater by myself and watch Ted. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> there you have it, folks. If you've got nothing else to do and no one wants to see, see you, Ted too. watch Ted too. <laughs> um, <laughs> have no friends and plenty of time? Go see Ted too. <laughs> Independence Day 2. <laughs> um, uh, confirmed cast. Liam Hemsworth. That's not confirmed. Is it? It's a pretty. No, no, no. no. It's just a strong contender. For uh, I thought it. Was, I'm pretty sure. I, I thought I'm, I heard it was confirmed. It's confirmed. I heard that it wasn't confirmed. When is the last time you heard any news? Yesterday. Last night at work. Um. <laughs> last night. <laughs> He's been in talks for for the past. It's been hit. It's been news. Who of him. cares? You, why are you on the show? <laughs> no, I don't care about him playing in Independence Day. I think it's a big deal. Really? Yeah. Do that? Is it because uh, Will Smith isn't in it? Yeah. He, no. He is not. I heard, is, that, uh, I heard is, that. Um. Michael B. Jordan was gonna be in it, and he was gonna play Will Smith's son. Who played against? Now that would be played against. It was, it was Jeff Goldblum, right? Yeah. Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum, and Bill Pullman, who are both reprising their roles. That's all I care about. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff yeah. Goldblum is. Oh, God. I love he's Jeff Goldblum. He is an, Jeff Goldblum. I was watching. Right. I was watching. Yes. I was watching the new episode of Portlandia last night. Mm-hmm. Jeff Goldblum was in it because he's in like every episode of that show. Yeah. Uh, pff, just freaking the dude's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I would rather uh, see Michael B. Jordan be in it than Liam Hemsworth. I haven't seen anything Liam Hemsworth mean? has been in though. Uh, he's in the, the, all the Hunger Games. I have not. I haven't seen the Hunger Games. Um, I'm trying to think of what else he, he was in. Something starring opposite of Amanda. Her, a blonde chick from uh, Alpha Dogs. Um, I don't even know what Alpha Dogs is. Have you never seen Alpha Dogs? No. Justin Timberlake movie with. Um, oh, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, but there was. Uh, God, well, I'm not gonna. Why? Uh, Indiana Jones. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford was the CEO of a company starring opposite of. I'm also gonna forget his name. Uh, Commissioner Gordon from the Batman trilogy. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Okay, so great at trivia crack. Yeah, I, <laughs> but uh, he's it was like a spy movie where he was. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it was actually it was okay. It was he's good in the boring action, like this stereotypical action role. I see why they brought him. I'm, on. Pre- I'm pretty sure the movie poster is him running or something like that. I didn't <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right. Well, anyway, um, Independence <laughs> Day 2. I'm excited for it. Well, I Independence like Day 2, or it's supposed, it's supposed to be called the ID4. That's the name of it. Independence Day Forever. Something like that. Right. I don't get the title. Why didn't just call Never it ID2? Stop putting, is, stop putting numbers in your title. Is this yeah, is, is this a uh, continuation of the story, or is this a reboot? Uh, it should be a continuation. Continuation. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other news. Uh, deaths, death on the set. Uh, Martin Scorsese, his new film, uh, there was a, um, 
see a ceiling collapse oh, I in thought Taiwan. We were, I thought we were talking about Shug Knight. We will be talking about Shug Knight. <laughs> um, during, on the, in Taiwan, during pre, pre-production, I believe a ceiling collapsed and um, one of the workmen there died. Which is just the, That's I rough. mean, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Sorry that this sucks. Um, but it's also a big, it's a big deal because this movie, um, Silence, has just been just a rough road going. Oh, this, is this Silence? Yeah, this is for Silence. I didn't know they started filming it already. Oh, yeah, they got the funding. They went straight into pre production. Right into it. Yeah, they were setting up all this stuff. It's pre production, so they're setting up sets and everything like yeah. that. Oh, they're doing okay. it. They're, it's film, being filmed in Taiwan. So. Dang. Let's hope yep. it. No more road bombs. I want to see this movie get made. I want to watch it. Right. I want to watch it. <laughs> we'll see. It's just the news that just happened, so it's not like it's affected any of the cast members or anything like that. Uh. Another, another more. We don't really need to talk about Shug Knight. I was just joking. Well, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's about a movie. I guess. It's about the, so the end, the coming uh, straight out of Compton, the NWA biopic, uh, Shug Knight, uh, the big figure K- from that. Killed 90s. a guy. Killed a guy. <laughs> I thought it was Brick you. killed a guy. <laughs> no, he got in a fight with two. Got in his car, he run. Ran, he ran someone over, backed he ran up. He backed two back, people over. One, one person killed. died, one the person others in the hospital. He backed up into them. And then drove forward. Yeah. This man's a. <laughs> what was the joke that you said? Oh, God. Gas is under $2 and should Knight yeah, kill the guy? Are we like, in the 90s? It was like, it was like, it was like <laughs> comments on a post. Yeah. Someone, was like, someone was like, Gas is under $2. Should Knight kill the man? The 90s are back, baby. It's like. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, is this really news? We know Shug Knight's a killer. I mean, but... this is, is a big deal because he's already up to facing seven years in prison from stealing yeah. a paparazzi's camera. And then let's not forget Tupac. Well, that's right. Yeah. It's his fault. It's his S- fault! Son, <laughs> son of a bitch. It's Shug Knight's but fault. Did you hear his lawyer's uh, like response to the whole thing? No. He's like, Shug Knight's not at fault. The guy, the two guys were attacking him. Yeah, he like was at, like he was he he felt he, about his frail health because he got shot like seven times earlier right, yeah. uh, at Chris Brown's party in New York. Well, and if you're going to a party for Chris Brown, you, you're going to get shot. <laughs> you should if you're endorsing Chris Brown. And then two, frail health. Have you seen Suge Knight? Yeah. I wouldn't, I, he could be in it. Full body cast, and I want to go near the man. Yeah, <laughs> he looked like he could beat me up with his eyeball. I just like, I just like that. Oh yeah, they were punching him while he was in his car, so his only defense was to run them. Over. Yeah, okay, that and sounds then like flee the scene. It just sounds like basically legal hubbub. But, but yeah, this. I'm still was, excited to see NWA straight out of the Compton. Yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, it's a biopic that we everyone should see. So yeah. we'll we'll see. All right, um, moving on. Get on more lighter news. <laughs> Very lighter news. Kevin Spacey uh, to play a cat. In, in, in Nine Lives. It's a comedy. Okay. It's a movie about a man who gets trapped in the body of a household cat. I like Kevin Spacey. I like comedy. <laughs> I, like I like cats. cats. Right. <laughs> so I'm game. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, like, it's, it sounds weird. Kevin but... Spacey can do comedy. Yeah. Kevin Spacey he's... can do anything. You seen him in he Horrible can Bosses? Yeah, he's so good in Horrible Bosses. He's so good at playing like this straight man in the comedy. But now he's gonna be a cat, and I'm excited to see how this goes. Well, I'm. Yeah. No, just... the question is, is it a kids movie or is it? I hope it's an adult movie. I I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't want to be a no kids idea. movie. If it's a kids yeah, movie, it won't be good. I can honestly tell you that. Yeah. Is this... What's gonna be Garfield? What's gonna be Garfield? <laughs> it's gonna be Garfield. <laughs> Garfield? No, oh, yeah. please, God, no. It's gonna be a lifetime. And the question is, Christmas special. Well, see, this is when I first heard that he was gonna play a cat in a movie. I was worried that it was the Grumpy Cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was I mean, Aubrey he... Plaza that played the Grumpy Cat. Yeah. Oh, she played. She the played Grumpy she... Cat. I thought she was in the movie. I didn't think that she was. No, she's no, she was the voice, no, of, the voice of Grumpy well, Cat. Well, I guess that fits. Who's a male cat, by the way? Too. No, it's just... it's a male. Really. Oh, who cares? What tartar sauce. sauce. For tartar it's, sauce. It's what they claim the name was. It's not tartar sauce. <laughs> it's not tartar sauce. What's the start of the word tartar? That's what the co- name of the cat was. Yeah. God. I got that question right on um, uh, Fibbage. Oh, oh, God. Fibbage. I freaking love Fibbage. No, you have that game? Hey. We played that at our house all the time with our roommates. Yeah. You play it online? Do you play the... We got the Steam. We put it up on the TV and we oh, all play on our phones. You can do it from... You can do... Uh, if you go to fibbage.com, I believe you can do it oh. there and just do it from uh, We got um, Jackbox 
on uh, Steam. Yeah. It's great. We want we get like eight people over and we all drink Nobody and play these games. Nobody will play with me. Come Everybody's over like, and this play. is the dumbest hey, thing. Ever. We got a new guy let's, to come play with let's us. Let's continue okay. with this show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So Thank you. Keep us on track, we should turn a video game channel. Yeah. Chill. Great. Let's finish this one before we figure out anything else on other ones. <laughs> See how the first episode goes before we start coming yeah. up with new ideas? Yeah, people actually won't watch this anymore. Uh, I don't. All right. <laughs> Everybody will watch it. Uh, Disney's right. uh, remake of Pete's Dragon uh, has Carl Urban replacing Michael C. Hall. I like that. Yeah. Judge Dredd versus Dexter. Judge Dredd wins. Judge Dredd wins everything. Yeah. <laughs> so. Dude's dating Starbuck. You can go for it. News. I just want to know is is, is Pete's dragon? Is it going to be like two D animated dragon? It's just a two D animated it, well, dragon. It's going to be cr- so no. It's going to be crude. It's going to be three D CGI'd right in there. Just the most blatantly disgusting CGI. I'm <sighs> excited for it. I'm just. I would. I would rather see it if it was like the traditional. Right like the, I would like to see it if it was the original. When and it, it was an anim- glass pain animation over the freaking individual frames. God, that's such a pain. Yeah, it'll take two years for it to finish, but hey, it'll be an all right movie. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Rabbit's one of my favorite movies. I yeah, love when there's I love when there's traditional two D animation mixed in with uh, live action. Yeah, we just watched that. Oh, I love it. That's all right, good movie. Last bit of news we oh, have the, for the day. One of the biggest bits of news. We're saving the best for the last. Saving the best for the last. Yeah. Ghostbusters reboot. Yeah. Um, it's gonna cast I think, um, I Kristen love- Wiig. Melissa McCarthy, Leslie Jones, and Kate McKinnon. I love it. I love this cast. Three of which have our SNL stars. I'm gonna buy this cast. I love yeah. it. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy was. I, I was. The rest are. The rest are yeah. though. I love Leslie Jones. She's killing it on SNL right now. Kate McKinnon has honestly been carrying. She won an Emmy. Kate McKinnon? Yeah. She's been carrying that show since she's been on it. Yeah, she won an Emmy and for her She's all over the place. She's she's doing a ton of voices on Venture Brothers, one of my favorite shows of all time ever. Uh, Kristen Wiig is always great. I love Kristen Wiig. And Melissa McCarthy, you just knew she was going to be in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's Melissa I mean, McCarthy. I'm don't, totally... She's hot right now. I'm totally freaking <laughs> out for this cast. Huge. Yeah. I mean, they've got a lesbian... A black lady and an overweight lady. I mean, that's, they're taking a risk. They're like taking a risk. Discriminatory. No, just, just the just worst person. Really wait for me. <laughs> no, but that, those are the archetypal characters that they're going yeah. for. You already know when you look at them, when you look at the cast, you can honestly say, oh, where are they going to go with this? I wonder I wonder where. Yeah. They're going to probably cast Kristen Wiig as like the more level-headed. She, yeah, definitely. She's going to be... Um, I forgot. I'm already forgetting the main cast. His name is. What? I'm trying to connect the characters I to the original. I don't. I don't think it's gonna. It's not a match up. Well, no, way. but it's the, the archetypes of the character. You already yeah. know that Melissa McCarthy is gonna play opposite pretty much Bill Murray's character in the movie. Kind of. Pretty yeah. much. And you, you mean so? I'm. I'm, I'm I don't know if I'm so excited about this. This it has nothing to do with the female. This cast. is what I said just, to somebody. I don't know if it was you or Chuck. Where I was like, I love this cast, super awesome. I don't think I don't think a Ghostbusters reboot is necessary. Yeah, it doesn't. But if but if you're but if been anything else, if you're gonna do it, this is a cast. This is a good cast to have. Yeah, that's what I. That's what my thought was. I did hear that this is supposed to be more like government agent. Oh, see what I heard. What I heard from the synopsis was that Kristen Wiig and Leslie Jones. Are former like paranormal partners that have gone their separate ways. Um, Kristen Wiig does something else, and Leslie Jones does another thing, and Kate McKinnon plays one of their assistants. Yeah. And then Melissa McCarthy plays like a metro driver, like a bus driver, or subway driver, or whatever. And then she has contact with the ghosts or whatever, and contacts Kristen Wiig and Leslie Jones to like get back together, and that's kind of the forms. So it's very different. Yeah. So I don't know. I just I love this cast. Are you ready for the dubstep remix of the Ghostbusters theme song? Who are you gonna call? Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Ghostbuster <laughs> featuring <laughs> Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> so. so yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, 
That's about the last bit of news we have. Here we go. The rest we have are rumors. What do we have for some quick rumors? Quick rumors. Rumors. Right. rumors. Yeah. Well, hearsay and gossip. Uh, Indiana Jones possible relaunch with Chris Pratt. Yeah? Yay? Nay? Do not give a damn. I think if they do this, too much Chris Pratt. Yeah. Okay. He's also got his other movie. Jurassic Park. Was it like Space Viking? No, he's got uh, Night- Cowboy Ninja Viking. Cowboy Ninja Viking, which is yeah. Space Based Viking. Based off a comic book, comic book movie. <laughs> So, I just, okay, we've got we've got him in Guardians. He's in too many franchises. He's, he's gonna be in that franchise. So he's got Guardians. He's basically already playing a combination of Han Solo and um, who Indiana put, Jones. Yeah, who puts out uh, Indiana Jones? What Disney? Disney. Disney. Okay, it's Lucasfilm. It's Lucasfilm. Yeah, I, I knew it was Lucasfilm, but I didn't know if it was um, released under a different. No, nope, it's under Disney yeah, now. Disney. Since Disney bought Lucasfilms and all that stuff. Yeah, I just wasn't sure where the IP stood. So, so that's two franchises. Under Disney, then. Yeah, under Disney. So movies. Chris Pratt has Guardians of the Galaxy. He's got this new Cowboy Ninja Viking. He's got the new Jurassic Park, which he's... Obviously, if they do a sequel, which they probably are, he's going to be in that, too. Well, I was gonna, that was going to be my question. Do you think it's going to be another... Do you think it's going to be a trilogy? Do you think it's going to be... Indiana Jones? No, no, no. Uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park? Who knows? We don't know Depends anything Depends on how much money it. it makes. Depends on how... If it makes if it makes enough money opening weekend, you know they're going to be... I mean, I'm, more, I'm already upset there's no Sam Neill. Who? Dr. Grant? Jurassic uh, Park? Yeah. I told you, uh, last time I saw Jurassic Park, I was very young. I don't remember. You, know, you don't? Oh. I know that Jeff Goldblum's Why? Why? Why are you on the show? <laughs> I'm the comic book guy. Yeah, that's, book I guy. guess. Worst show ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I mean, I can only hope that he becomes a strong lead role and you see more of Yeah, him. I'm just worried. I don't want to say too much, though. Yeah, I'm Plus, just... the dude's going to get burnt out. I'm just worried. Too you many do it now while you too, can. Many, too many trilogies, too many big series... And he's going to carry too much baggage. You know, if they make him act at all like he does in Ga- Guardians of the Galaxy. Which he's already basically playing Annie Dwyer on Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, so it's like it's, you, he just carries too much baggage with him. I think he's a fantastic actor. I love oh, him in everything yeah. he does. I'm just worried that it's going to be Chris Pratt, not Indiana Jones. You know, And this, is, this will be the first Indiana Jones movie that... Isn't, isn't Harrison Ford? Yeah, isn't Harrison Ford? Like that's that's a big deal. Although the last two couple movies have been, I mean, the, last one. the one that cannot be named. Uh, the last. Mm. No, so, yeah. don't. We're done. We're done talking about that. Right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Indiana Jones reboot. Uh, Aquaman news uh, or rumor? Sorry, not news. Uh, Jason Momoa is not going to be blonde or white. So no, eat not. that. Purist, yeah, blonde or white. He's obviously not going to be white. He's Hawaiian. Well, like, you know, he's not. They're not going to try and change him to fit some bill that some people, other, some other people want. Like, oh, he doesn't look like Aquaman. Aquaman's. This is what Aquaman looks like. Where's his blonde hair? Where's his giant beard? Or where's his baby? Just have faith. Be open to it. Jason Momoa. This is Cal Drogo we're talking about here. Come on. He's a. He's awesome. He looks awesome. He's beastly, and you can only hope it's going to be great. And just keep an open mind and an open heart. Open mind and an open heart. Especially when it comes to Aquaman, because that's as much as you can give for Aquaman. Yeah, I mean, you can't. Do it's much not the most stable of franchises. I was gonna say, in people's minds. Yeah. And what, how much interest they have. So people think of Aquaman, they think of DC, the superhero friends. Do you think? They think of him riding it? dolphins as skis. Do you think of Mermaid Man? Yeah. yeah. Mermaid, Mermaid Man and, and Barnacle, Barnacle Boy. Boy. That is Aquaman. Mermaid as you Man mind. and Barnacle Boy. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. Um, last bit of rumor. Uh, it's a Latino, this is from Latino Review. Um, they're it was talking with uh, in regards to Guillermo del Toro's Justice League Dark movie. Uh, Constantine, Zatanna, Dead Man, and I, th- I think I spelled that right. Erkin, the Demon will be the main characters. Uh, key note is that all of these characters have been name dropped by del Toro. With him even saying that he will be happy with Matt Ryan's Constantine from the MC series. I would absolutely love that. I think he killed it. Sorry, this is Matt Ryan. Killed it as Constantine. Yeah. 
I get that some people like the Keanu Reeves interpretation of the movie. Why? I don't know. <laughs> some people do. Because they don't know the comics. They don't know the comics at all. Their their idea of Constantine is Keanu Reeves. Right. And they saw the TV show and was like, this guy is nothing like him. And it's because he's more like the comics. He is Constantine. He is so Constantine. And I'd be so happy to see a dark, uh, a dark Justice League movie. I can't talk. You know who's missing from this lineup? Swamp Thing. That Swamp Thing. All right, Swamp Thing was uh, name drop, but it's not talked about in this rumor. D- Del Toro has name dropped Swamp Thing, but this is in regards to the Tina Reviews rumor. Okay. So we. I just that's. I didn't want to put that in there because I didn't want to confuse. Yeah. Because I don't want to say this is what they said when in fact they didn't, and then we get yelled at by probably each other. Say, You're wrong. I'm gonna text message. Shut the hell up. Uh, oops. Uh, don't post it. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Just cut if that part if out. we're wrong about anything, comment and tell us we're wrong, because we want to know. Yeah. We'll try and be better about not being wrong, but there are no guarantees because we're only human. Yeah. <laughs> we're not journalists. And we don't get paid for this, so doesn't we just do it for fun? Mm. But yeah, that's about it for rumors. All right. You guys want? I mean. How much time do we, what are we at? What do we have for time? Uh, a little bit over an hour. Uh, hour and four. Well, I want to... You got anything else? Yeah, I, I wanted to, I want to just, it was a quick, quick little, little bit at the end here. Um, last week I asked you what movies you wanted to see, and we talked about that. I haven't uh, seen any of the movies I said I was going to see last week. Neither did I. Neither did we, because they're not out yet. Yeah, they're, <laughs> we are completely, this weekend. we thought that they came out last weekend, but they came also, out. Also, this is our first show, so nobody even knows what yeah, we said we were going to see. Yeah, the never happened. This is... We're not the droids you were looking for. Ooh. So, in an, I just just kind of an outro. I want to ask you, um, what genre of film do you want to be seen that doesn't get made very much often anymore? Come back, or or, or sorry, not even come back. What what do you want to see in a movie? What kind of movie do you want that you like? You're hankering for. You just like, oh, I want to see this this kind of movie. Oh, while you're thinking about it, I'll just go ahead and say mine. Yeah. I want. A detective movie, like a real like detective, like noir, detective. like noir, like I want that like that like, narrating in the voice. She's like, she's got said not like the full noir is like sending. She kind of like Sin City, like she had the she had the legs of a demon. She had the legs that went on forever. <laughs> and the lips of fire, or something like that. It's just and she's like, and I knew she was gonna be the death of me. Like just some obvious foreshadowing, just the cheesiest thing. Just the so you want to be like a comedy kind of, or like no, no satire, no. But like not not satire, but like it's like this self-aware. Is, this yeah, Meta. kind of a self-aware kind of like this is a detective story. This is exactly what we imagine when we see these like these shots of like black and white, knock on the door, three a.m. I'm usually up in an hour, so I wasn't really all that upset. <laughs> Something like that, like. Do you want this to be like period piece set? No. Back, or do you want no? I just, I just want a detective noir film. It doesn't have to. It could be tongue in cheek. It could be a comedy. It could be serious. I just want one. We don't have one. The closest one we're gonna probably have in a in a while is the Fables movie, and that's not even gonna be really what I'm looking for either. Yeah. Oh man, what kind of movie do I want to see more of? Or or even what movie do you want to see less of? We'll go with that. Too. Oh okay. Ooh, less of. Ooh. Young adult um, dystopian future movies. They make money though. I yeah. Don't, don't want to see them. I inevitably see them every time. I see even, them every time too. Even though because I, I, to I, probably, I see them every time, probably because I've already read the books when I was younger. So like, nerd. This, yeah, I'm a nerd. We have a button. I read a book. We, we need to get a button that says nerd every time. <laughs> when one of us is too nerdy, <laughs> just says nerd. All right. But yeah, the, so like Maze Runner and Divergent and all of these. Get rid of them. I don't want them in my box office. I don't want them in my box office. <laughs> okay, old man Scott. <clears throat> um, probably, probably like the Hallmark horror movies. Like I'm sick of. I don't want another Paranormal Activity. I don't want more like found footage horror movies. Oh, that's another genre I want. Gone. Found footage. Get rid of it. Yeah. I'm sick of these like made to look like low budget horror films. Well, it's because they are low budget horror films. Well, they're made on a budget of $25. <laughs> 
I mean, if you look at Paranormal Activity, it was made twenty-five dollars in actors' broken dreams. Yeah, <laughs> Paranormal Activity. I think the first one was made for like fifteen or twenty-five thousand dollars. I thought the first one was okay. It was okay. It should have stopped there. They should have taken the. But it made too much money. Lump, obviously, a huge lump sum that they made. They should have made a better horror series after that. Yeah. I like horror films. I like suspense. I like thriller. Like that kind of stuff. I want good horror though. I don't want. Like I'm sick of this. It's just like blatant. Just watch some horror films. Watch some Korean horror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want go. some straight terror in your life? <laughs> not even Japanese horror. Korean horror is the worst. Yeah. And I'm I'm not gonna remember the name of the movie, but we watched. Um, and this kind of goes against what I said because it was a lower budget horror film, but it was. Oh, it had a good. really. It was made really well. It had a really good twist at the end, and it was kind of like a mind. Fuck. It could be really good because, I mean, look French. at the first Evil Dead. Oh, it was only on a budget of like $200,000. Yeah. $200,000, that's a lot of money. Mm. Oh, $200 million. Sorry, I'm thinking. Yeah, it made over $200 million. Yeah. So, they fly. These were made by college kids. Yeah. So, I mean, like, that in the first Evil Dead, that was a terrifying oh, movie. They saved just so much, like, half the movie is the director playing certain roles because they couldn't get the other actors right. back. Right, it's like, it's almost like a joke, but it's not, you watch it and you're like, this is a this is really good movie. And I love the Evil Dead series. Yeah. So. Oh, a, an example of a horror movie I'd love to see more of, Cabin in the Woods. Oh, that was such a great movie. It was oh. so good. It, I did not, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was just a generic, another normal horror movie. And then I saw it. was it. almost like not even horror. No, yeah. Well, it was until you kind of get to the end you know what i mean it's yeah. like it plays itself as horror you know? if you haven't seen it yet honestly go watch it it was one of the one of the best movies that came out in 2013 yeah it's so good i think it was my favorite movie of that year really probably. love yeah. nice joss it was directed by joss whedon yeah it was if you guys so are good. you know joss whedon fans it's starring chris hemsworth is in it there you go yeah. that's your reason to go see it go see it because chris hemsworth is in it sigourney weaver too sigourney weaver's in it too not till the end yeah I think I want to see more, you, because your original question was what movies do you want to see, see more of, yeah. More like goofy, like uh, like sci-fi comedies. Like Galaxy Quest? No, 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 no. <laughs> but like, like Galaxy Quest? <laughs> That's fine too, yeah. Or like, okay, when I was a kid, I was a really big fan. This is why I'm really excited for Ant-Man right now. I was a really big fan of the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids oh. series. Well, Rick I'd like Moranis. to see more... Like, it's a kid. His kids are getting older. He might come back. I, don't, I would want to. I would want him to. Um, but like something along that genre. It doesn't have to be like, I don't want a reboot of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Absolutely not. The original is so good. But I, I like the, like, the wacky kind of weird sci-fi. I don't know. The family it's kind of a weird, Yeah, family it's kind of a weird stuff. genre, but it's, it's just nostalgic for me. That's probably why I like it. Yeah. One thing about it, I think that's probably the reason why I'm so excited for back to my like the kind of movie that I want to see more of. That's why I'm so excited for um, Doctor Strange. Mm. Is I'm hoping it's going to be kind of like that, like not necessarily that straight up horror, but yeah, kind of... a dark fantasy movie. But... I want a fantasy movie, like a fantasy high fantasy, talking about dragons and elves and stuff like that. That's not afraid to be a high fantasy movie. And make it and make a good movie and not try and be Lord of the Rings. Why don't you go see Seventh Sun next week? I'm going to go see Seventh Sun next week. Are you really? Week. Yeah, because it's done by Legendary, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, I love Legendary's fantasy films. They're insane. Well, yeah. It, I think <laughs> Big golfs, huh? Yeah. Nice try, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's, that's about it for us. We're pretty much out of time here for the Fuzzy Loaf movie show. I am Chuck. You can get a hold of me uh, at Get Chucked. No E, just the D. <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, Scott, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Scotty Boy, uh, B W O four Ys. All right, and you can find me on Twitter at Hagnerd, H A G N E R D. All right, we'll also put them in the uh, the bottom of the the, uh, the, you... the stuff. We'll also you can also follow Fuzzy Loaf. Yeah. You can follow all of us on Fuzzy follow Loaf. Follow all of us on Fuzzy Loaf. Uh, at Fuzzy Loaf. That's probably the easiest that you could do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, so hit subscribe if you want to subscribe. Leave a comment. Dislike, like. Doesn't matter what you want to do. Just give us some feedback. Join the conversation. Seriously. Let us you, know what you think of any of if, the rumors. If you got a really good insult, I, I, I love hearing those kind of things. <laughs> so just, leave, just drop it down there. I'm a big boy. I can take it. You can take the trolls? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope sure as hell hope so. Chuck's cur- curled up in his bed in the fetal position for a week. Chuck, you okay? Did you no. see what they said to us on YouTube? YouTube, <laughs> what? The trolls are coming. There's right. a troll in the dungeon. <laughs> All right, we're All done. Right. <laughs> Thank you.